Today we're going to look at a few simple problems related to Bernoulli's equation and elementary fluid dynamics. In another video I will go through uh, more complex problems as well, but just to get the basis of it I'm going to go through problems uh, that would be related to the concepts of, uh, for example, different types of pressure, which means stagnation pressure. Um, and I'm also going to look at a problem related to free jets. Let, let's just look at the first uh, problem, which is related to static, stagnation, dynamic, and total pressures. And we've got the problem statement here, which states that a person is uh, traveling, let's say, in a river or something. He's in a boat. There's a certain velocity. And we need to find out the maximum pressure that acts on his hand when he puts his hand into the water. So first of all, we would need to list the assumptions that we're making here before we move on and apply Bernoulli's equation or any other equation uh, for that matter. So my assumptions here would be that I'm treating um, this as an inviscid flow, so there's no viscous effects. I'm treating that this as an incompressible flow as well. And I'm assuming that the flow is steady. So we've got those assumptions and now we need to imagine this scenario. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to assume that we're looking at, say, this is the water surface. And the hand is thrust in, let's say, at this point. Okay. So um, the boat is traveling at 3 meters per second. So uh, you could imagine that relative to the person, the speed of water is 3 meters per second as well. So I'm going to take a point that is away from the person's hand, and I'm going to make it this point, and I'm going to call this point 1. Let's call this point 2. So at point 1, I've got my velocity, which is 3 meters per second. I've got my pressure here as well because I'm looking at the surface. So the pressure at 1, the gauge pressure, uh, is going to be equal to 0 because this is a free surface. Other than this, because I'm only looking at the surface, so I'm assuming that there is no elevation change that takes place, and that means that Z1 is going to be equal to Z2. Okay, so what, what else do we have? All right, so the other thing, the other information that we have is that the person thrusts his hand here. So we're going to assume that the water comes to a standstill, kind of, and uh, like we talked about when we uh, were talking about pitted static tube, that the stagnation pr uh, point, at the stagnation point, the velocity becomes zero at the entrance. So that is what is happening here as well, and the velocity is going to be equal to zero at point two. So now I can go ahead and I can apply the Bernoulli's equation onto the situation, uh, which was along the streamline, and that will be of this form, if I'm representing the equation in terms of the different types of heads, I've got the pressure head here, the velocity head, and the elevation head at point one, which is because this is constant along the streamline, so this is going to be equal to uh, the pressure head, velocity head, the sum of pressure head, velocity head, and elevation head at point two. So plugging in now the information that is given to me, um, this term is going to be equal to zero because pressure at one is zero. Uh, this term is going to stay, the elevations are equal to each other, so Z1 and Z2 are going to cancel out. I've got velocity at 2, which is equal to 0, so this term is going to cancel out as well, and I'm left with this term and this term here, and then I can simplify this to basically write it in terms of pressure at 2, which would give me the maximum pressure on the person's hand. So pressure at 2 is going to be equal to this term here is going to move to the other side and it's going to so pressure at 2 is going to be equal to gamma into this term here. And then gamma we already know is a specific weight which is equal to rho g and where rho is the density so uh, the gravitational constant is going to cancel out and I'm going to be left with rho into v square by v1 square by 2g. So usually you would have uh, 
you know, information, the temperature information given to you in a question as well. But because there is no such information given to you, that then you have to assume uh, the value of density here. And because we're talking about water, so let's assume, I'll just make an assumption, I'll, I'll write that assumption here, and I'll make the assumption that the water is not freezing. So I'm so let's say the water is around 10 degrees, right? 10 degrees Celsius. And at 10 degrees, the density of water is 999.7 uh, kilogram per meter cube. So then I have to substitute that here. If you do have the temperature information given to you, then you would have to go into the tables, the water tables, for example, and you would have to look at what the density is across the uh, temperature that is given to you. If that temperature is not given to you, you would obviously have to interpolate to find out uh, the density. So I've got my density here. I've got my velocity that is given to me, which is 3 meters per second. And make sure that you write your units whenever you're working with these kind of problems. Squared by 2g, and the value for g is 9.81. So I can plug that in here, 9.81, and okay, so that's it, meter per second squared here. And so I can just go ahead and find out, just calculate all of this, and find out what my value for pressure at 2 is, and that's going to be have to have uh, consistent units as well so it's going to be in newton per meter square but then you could also convert this from newton per meter square if you're asked to do that into something like pascals uh, which is a more appropriate unit for pressure or into kilopascals because pascals is way smaller so usually you would write this in kilopascals so go ahead and calculate this, see if uh, you can work it out. It should be pretty simple. And now we can go ahead and move on to the second problem, which is uh, kind of, again, a problem related to water, but the situation is a little different now because now we are looking at a tank in which the water is flowing through a hole. Uh, the speed is given to us as well. So first of all, again, we have to construct the diagram of it makes things easier rather than just imagining it. So the information that I have from the question is that I've got an open, a large open tank and I've got a hole that is in the bottom of the tank. So I make the tank, let's say I've got this tank here and I've got, let's say, a hole at the bottom of this tank somewhere here. So I'm just going to leave it at home as an opening for now. So what that means is that the water can flow out of this hole here. And let's say I've got this tank filled up to a certain depth. So it's going to have free surface up top. And uh, what else? So let me just write the information that is given to me now. I've got water flowing through this hole with a speed that is given to me. So I've got velocity given to me here which is 8 meters per second. And now I have to apply Bernoulli's equation onto this situation. So the easiest way to do that would be, although I could apply it between two points anywhere throughout this, but the easiest way to do it is to select the point at the free surface here and select the second point at this point at the hole here because I've got the velocity information given to me here. So at the free surface, I know that the gauge pressure here is going to be equal to zero. So let me call this point one. So I've got pressure at one, which is equal to zero. And because it's a free surface, so the velocity at one is going to be equal to zero as well. Right. And then, okay, what else? Uh, yeah, and then at this point, let me call this point two. I've got velocity at two, which is given to me which is 8 meters per second. And now, because it's a free jet here, so for a free jet, the pressure is going to be equal to 0 as well. So I've got P2, that is equal to 0 as well. So that's the information that I have. Other than that, 
I need to look at the elevation as well. So if I'm treating this as, uh, let's say, zero elevation, so then Z2 for me is going to be equal to zero. Then the elevation of this point is going to be at a certain height. So my Z1 over here is going to have a certain depth. And let me just call that depth H. I've got this depth here, right? I've got Z1, which is equal to H. So again, I'm going to use Bernoulli's equation. I could use the same form um, of the equation, and I could apply this situation onto that equation. So again, we make sure that we list the assumptions here first before we move on to applying this equation. And one of the assumptions is that we are applying this equation onto a streamline. So we are basically applying this equation onto a streamline, for example. Across the streamline, we cannot use this. Uh, sorry, yes, across the streamline, we cannot use this equation. I mean, normal to the streamline, we cannot use this equation. Uh, but if we are looking at um, across the streamline, we ha we can use this equation, right? So um, I can just plug all the information that is given to me now, which means that this term is going to be equal to zero. And I've got this term, which is going to be equal to zero as well. And this term and this term, right? So I'm not missing anything now. So from here, I can simply go ahead and find out the value for Z1, which is what I need to find, the depth. So Z1, which I said was equal to H, and that is equal to V2 square by 2G. So I can just plug in the value of the gravitational constant here. I can plug in the value of velocity, which is given to me, and I can find out the elevation in meters. So the point of using this equation was because all of these terms are in meters anyway, so it's easier for me to just use this equation and find it out. If, you know, this is, um, we use Bernoulli's equation straight away, but when we talked about free jets in the previous video, we saw already that we arrived at this equation for our free jet, which was uh, V equals 2G Z1 under root anyway. But if you don't remember that, you don't need to rem remember that. You can just work it out through this equation. So let's move on to the next problem now. And I've got, hold on. So I've got this problem given to me in which there's three different situations that are being shown here. And I've got this uh, can here. There's holes in this can at these locations. And I need to find out that which of these figures is the correct one, which of these figures shows the correct orientation of this velocity variation, or which of these figures shows the correct uh, velocity profile for water as it leaves the hole. So, um, so again, I need to think about the situation first, which points I'm going to choose, if I'm going to uh, apply Bernoulli's equation onto it, so oh, the most obvious is that I choose the first point on the free surface here. And then the second point now, because I've got holes here, so these are free jets which are uh, coming out of these holes. So then the second point that I can choose, for example, would be on these holes, right? So then I can apply the equation onto the streamline here, and uh, I can easily find out what, for example, my value for velocity would be at 2, for example. So uh, using the same situation, I'm going to write the assumptions first, then I'm going to apply the Bernoulli's equation onto it, and what I'm going to end up finding out is that because the velocity at 1 is 0, because it's a free surface, the pressure at 1 is 0, gauge pressure, Z1 is going to be equal to a certain height here, the velocity at 2, that's going to be equal to some, um, you know, number that we need to find out. The pressure at 2 is going to be equal to 0 uh, because it's a free jet. 
and z2 is going to be some value here as well. Okay. So I can basically go ahead and uh, write this equation, and this term is going to be equal to 0. I've got this term that's going to be equal to 0 as well because the velocity at the free surface here is 0. Um, the pressure at 2 is 0 because it's a free jet. And uh, this is v2 velocity at 2. And now I can write down this equation and simplify it. So it's going to be z1 equals v2 squared by 2g plus z2. So I can write it in terms of velocity at 2, which is going to be equal to 2g into um, z1 minus z2 under root. But instead of writing it z1 minus z2, which is basically from here until here, so I can just name this entire thing as uh, let's let's say I, let's say I call it z. So then v two is going to be equal to two g z, where z is z one minus d two. So now there's two ways I can figure out which of these configurations is correct. The first is if you've used calculus or if you've studied calculus before you will easily be able to identify that this is the velocity uh, this is the equation of a parabola because it's going to be v square equals 2gz right so it's going to be the equation of a half parabola which from these this is a straight line this is curved inwards so this can't be a parabola this is the only viable option for me if i know calculus the second option is that i start assuming uh, you know certain values for z here and I start plugging them in start finding out the velocity at different heights so for example I find it out here and then so on and so forth and then I'm gonna find out certain velocities and I'm gonna see the trend how the velocity is increasing as we go further down so either way you're gonna find that this is uh, the situation which represents the velocity variation a lot more appropriately and that's why I would go with this choice.